Good evening everyone and welcome to my studio for another free class. Tonight we are going to be doing apple and dogs and back there is the setup. When you place a still life you have to take in consideration the cast shadow that forms back there and this extra space that you want to add to your canvas to create this illusion of something that's three-dimensional and we need to add the five values that I talk a lot about to be able to create something that looks three-dimensional and that has volume and here I put the light so we have a lot of contrast so that you can define our values very easy. For example, on this apple, we have the shadow side right here. We have the body tone right here that's in light. We have the highlight where the light hits. We have the cast shadow down here and a cast shadow in this puppy. And we we'll add the reflection over here, which is our fifth value. This puppy, same thing. It has a shadow area. It has these light areas, which is the body tone. We have the cast shadow of this ear casting on the face. And then this guy, same thing. All this side of this dog is in shadow. It has the cast shadow back there on our uh, wall. The eyes have highlights. So every object has all pretty much the five values. And so when we analyze and we add the colors correctly, that's when we make something pop off the canvas. I better get my glass off my easel. <laughs> and one more sip before we start, okay? Let's just quickly visualize where we want this, these puppies to go. I want, I don't want my apple right here in the middle because otherwise it's going to make my painting a target. And so let's make it so it's charming and interesting. And I'm going to go, I'm going to shift everything more to the right because of my cast shadow here on the side. And I'm just going to imagine that my apple is a circle and my, my little doggy here is an oval. And this other guy is also, it has an oval for the head and an oval for the body. And so very quickly, I can have a feel of, of placement just by adding these quick um, lines. And then I'm gonna add this box right there. And I'm going to add the back of the box just because I want to. I didn't need it to. I could just do a whole big thing with these elements, but that's what I'm seeing there. And, and I'm going to use it for tonight. So I think this placement is actually pretty okay. So now we can keep adding more information with our lines and improve on our elements and our objects. And this, this doggy has the cast shadow back here, which is pretty much a mirror of that will be the same as here. All right, all right. I see a stretched back shadow but I'm going to just add an indication of it. Uh, it I always tell you it's, it's my painting and so I can manipulate 
the colors and create so it makes a better painting and it doesn't give the viewer uh, these complications that then you don't understand and then you have to be making trying to of uh, you know make up what what that is and so we can make it easier for the viewer to know what all this is and I'm adding just a few extra lines just to make sure this is all good and then we are going to start mixing colors and analyzing uh, how we are going to mix and the questions we need to ask. Yep, yep, yep. And so look, this guy has an oval. Very important to simplify in these beginnings to so that you don't invest so much time on a stage that what if you don't like it? What if the placement is not good? And then you have to erase everything and, and you spend so much time with details. So it's better to have a quick visual envelope your, your elements, then you'll, you'll be more successful and you're not gonna waste so much time fixing, fixing, fixing. So now I am adding more information and I'm going to add the shadow that I see. I see shadow on the both half of these little legs. And then I have this, this arm, which is foreshortened. And this side is in shadow. See, just by adding values with these quick lines, it already looks like what I see. We can spend an hour refining what we see here. But for tonight, this should do. It's just to reveal our, our fundamentals, like I like to do every time we meet, is to go through all these fundamentals over and over and over and over. And this is what will make you paint better or even draw better by understanding what you're doing and why you're doing it instead of uh, trying to color match and figure out what color that is, if you understand what light does to your object, then you don't need to color match. You interpret, and interpreting is the way to go. That is my, um, my technique, okay? And so as I am placing all this, I'm already thinking of my light side and my shadow side. And design-wise, this little painting is going to be very successful. It's going to be great. I have enough contrast to make something very interesting. And so this, all this is going to be darker so I can accentuate my focal point, which is probably going to be right here, this apple. And so we can make our focal point uh, important and make these decisions ahead of time. I have my yellows from light to dark and dull. Yellow ochre and burnt umber are yellows. 
I have my oranges from light to dark and duller. That's raw sienna and burnt sienna. These are all oranges. And then I have my reds. I have a bright red, I have an Indian red, and I have a alizarin. Alizarin is a very versatile color. It's awesome to have on your palette. And then I have my blues from light to dark. Actually, you can, there's so many blues out there in the market, just pick whatever blue you like. You can use uh, a solarium blue, you can use cobalt blue, I have ultramarine and tallow and this other one that's more like late navy blue. And then I have my greens from light to dark, my white, a few pinks, and this is black. And this afternoon I was painting a portrait, so I had to use raw umber. And raw umber uh, in my order would be right there. That is like a cooler, lighter yellow. Okay. Having a medium-sized brush, you, you know, larger areas, larger brushes. Smaller areas, smaller brushes. So adapt the brushes to the area you're painting. In fact, I'm gonna go even a little bit bigger. I'm gonna go with this one here. It I see a red on this apple, but it's not as bright of a red that uh, I have here, my super cadmium red. So I am going to pick up this red and I'm going to lighten it up with white. And I'm going to block in my body tone. And I think this is a good color. And as it goes away from the light, it darkens. And so to create the transition to the shadow color, I'm going to darken the red with a little bit of alizarin. Actually, I picked up a little bit of my, my uh, Indian red, but it's okay. Let's create the illusion of three-dimensional. Look at that. Just by adding a darker color, I'm already making this apple turn. And this is not even the shadow color. This is just the body tone going into shadow. My shadow color. What do we, how do we make shadow color for red? We add the complementary color to it. It's green. That's my shadow color right there. I put green on my, on my red and I made a shadow color. Good, so I am only blocking in my areas. I'm not ready to be refining or adding more information for now. Just creating the basic application and uh, blocking in paint, okay? So, Apple's done. I need to ask myself, what color is it that I see? It can only be six colors. It can only be yellow, orange, red, purple, blue, or green. And so, what color is it out of all these colors I said? It's yellow. It can only be yellow. I don't see any orange on it, but I see yellow and so let me start with white because it's a light yellow after you ask what color you see you have to ask yourself the tone in relationship to everything else it is a light medium of, or dark and and then the third question will be the intensity of the color it's a yellow but it's not intense at all it's a very mild yellow and dull yellow. 
So it's a light dull yellow. The dull yellow I have on my palette is yellow ochre. And so I'm going to add this dull yellow and very light into these areas where I see light. And I am going to block in these light areas that I see. Just blocking in the body tone with the color that I determined after an analyzing what I'm seeing. This is the lightest mixture I can make, but you will probably not be able to make it up that is this light until I put some color around it. And let's do that. Let's add some background color so we can make up all this light that we have been seeing. This guy over here, the same thing is a similar neutral color. It is mm, also yellow, but it's even duller than yellow ochre. My dullest color yellow that I have on my palette is burnt umber. And so I'm just going to pick some burnt umber and the lightest mixture and I'm going to introduce this color here. And we again, we are going to add the background so we can make up these color mixtures. Okay. And the color on the background, I see it as, it's also yellow, isn't it? Is it burnt umber yellow? Let's see, darker burnt umber. Hmm, I think it's actually burnt umber with a touch of yellow ochre. It's warmer. Eh, good enough. Now we have all this down. What about we make a cast shadow? It is our yellow, our darker yellow that we already used, burnt umber and yellow ochre. The complementary color of yellow is a violet. And so I'm going to add some violet to this mixture. And I'm going to make a dark, 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 dark cast shadow. Oh, that is beautiful, beautiful. Let's add some darker color here to interpret this cast shadow here of this little guy. So it already looks like he's in front. Now we can add that there. That's a little bit of cast shadow there and then here and then we have a cast shadow of this little dog back there too let's make it a little bit darker so we can see uh-huh so that's this little guy and then we have cast shadow here Cast shadows are so important. It pretty much anchors your elements to your painting. Just add it. Hmm? Yep. And pay attention to the curve 
how it it is the right angle now as it curves towards the center of the face it gets darker and so why don't use a darker orange yeah and then i have this other eye here with my lightest orange i that's all i see and then i have the pupil it's really black area and so i see black might as well use black let's use black and do the pupil add that there and then i also see black here and the nose actually goes in front but i'm going to add a little bit of black to the nose too so simplify your process guys just analyze what color it is ask those questions to you and you will have an awesome result so on these eyes I can make them a little bit better and more round. And so on these eyes, I have a bright orange right there. And I have the light hitting here. And so I'm going to make it even lighter. And I'm going to make it darker here because that is in shadow and I'm going to fix this eye this way and I'm going to create a socket This is also darker than that. Uh, and my favorite part, go and go into an even smaller brush now because I'm gonna add the, I wanna add a highlight. And I'm gonna put one highlight only right there. And I'm going to put some highlight right there. Make it, break it, make it again very bright. And I'm going to have another light light right there. And maybe that's not where I see it, but that's where I'm going to add it. And I see a little highlight on the nose, too. Oh, oh, that's so cute. So, what about we add these eyes? It's black. And it's black. The black is easy to figure out. It could be burnt umber. Actually, burnt umber is when you mix it with white. Yeah, that's a good color too. So let's add that there and block in this ear. So first, uh, first we block in the shape of what you see and then later you can worry about the, the other values on it. Later you can add the, the 
highlight and the cast shadow and so on and so forth. So this is now lighter here. Oh, so because I determined this yellow, my lightest version of yellow here will be yellow ochre. Mm -hmm. And let's put that same color on the little nose. This side here is in light and the other side is in shadow. So yellow in shadow has the complementary color. And so we can make the shadow color right there. Gorgeous, gorgeous. <laughs> and then we can create a shadow area for this light yellow that we made if I chose yellow ochre to do, do my lightest side, then I'm going to mix black and white to decide on the value of my shadow. And in this case, it's a rather light shadow. So it's going to be a light gray and I'm gonna mix it with some um, violet. And to make a pretty violet for yellow shadow, it's... Um, alizarin crimson and so let's add this shadow color here that's a great shadow color shadow shadow this is all shadow my dog actually is thinking that i'm talking to her because her name is shadow and she's looking at me it's so cute i have shadow on this side too but it's lighter i'm painting along i don't even know if you can see okay good and then that's in shadow and then i'm gonna use the same shadow color to create volume on these little feet here and i'm gonna create shadow color for this side of the little feet and the cast shadow, it's the same thing, but just a tad darker. And so I'm just gonna make the same shadow, but a little bit darker. And then here is the cast shadow of this foot into this foot. So it's a, a little bit different color to create these different values. And we can go back into the lightest shadow and put it on this side here. This is all shadow and this is all shadow and this is all shadow. Look how pretty this looks like guys. It's, it's just interpreting the correct color and you can bring this three-dimensionality to your painting. There's a cast shadow there. And then there. Quick, 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 quick. I see this shape here. We can now fix it and keep going back and forth. And this is the little body back there. And then we can come back later and uh, improve on this. I'm going to add a highlight to my apple. Mm -hmm. the stem of the apple the stem also has a shadow side and this apple also in the stem also has a highlight I think 
think I'm gonna add some yellow. I wanna see some yellow on this apple. Yeah, pretty. I can make this reflection even a little bit lighter and I can then at a later time keep improving on all these beautiful colors by tapping, tapping, tapping. So that's one way that you can create the illusion of these little hairs using our brush. Oh, that's cute. to finish this game. See you next time. Bye. And don't forget to subscribe.